Here's a look at uh, the highest graded uh, Browns PFF grades um, in week four against the Raiders. And, and we've talked about it. Deshaun Watson graded out the highest. 86, Devin Bush 77.1, Jeremiah Wusu koromoa 74.8, Jerome Ford uh, 74.3, and Miles Garrett basically playing on half a leg since uh, both his feet are, uh, are banged up, limited snaps, uh, 71.8. When you look at those grades, what grades in the 70s, what do, what do those tell you um, when you look at that? So grades in the 70s and 80s are obviously very good. I mean, if you get grades in the 70s, you're talking about like above average, right? I would say average and guys who don't really have a much of an effect, they have kind of a neutral effect on the game or in the low 60s, like 60 to 65. If you're in, a, in the 70s and high end of the 70s, you're a plus contributor. The one thing that sticks out to me there is, yes, Miles Garrett actually grading a 71.8 is lower than he usually would. There's a lot of games in the 90s for him because he's one of the best players in football. But I really need to focus on the rest of this defensive line here because he's not getting a whole lot of help. And it's showing me that if Miles Garrett isn't at an elite level, well, they're, they're going to struggle because the rest of their defensive line did not show up. Garrett had five pressures and two sacks included in there. The rest of the team had five pressures altogether and only hit Gardner Minshew once. So you're really looking at a defensive line in the passing game where your pass rush was one-dimensional in this game against the Raiders. And then the run defense outside of the forced fumble that they returned for a touchdown, which is admittedly a huge play that got him back in the game. Outside of that one play, they didn't do a whole lot. Their run defense grade on their D-line outside of that play was like a 55, which is not good. Then you start getting into negative territory. So they they need the rest. Of, as, as great as Garrett is and as great as we know he can be as a future Hall of Famer, if he's going to be injured and out there playing at 80%, they need more help on this defensive line. They got out physical in this game against the Raiders, and the Raiders came into this game not being able to run the ball at all. Yeah, I think it was the third worst rushing attack in the NFL, and they ran for over 150 yards. Um, what else grabbed your – was it the D-line that really grabbed your attention with that Browns-Raiders game, or is there something else? Uh, it, it's really trench play on both sides. It's the defensive line like we just talked about and the offensive line with the injuries. And, and look, their, their original starting five that the Browns had was very, very good when they're all healthy. But, you know, you lose especially Wyatt Teller on the inside. You, you can start to feel it now with all these offensive line injuries. We've talked about Jedrick Wills before. Jack Conklin's a veteran guy who's injured. They are just losing pieces on this offensive line left and right. And teams with bad offensive lines, no matter how they got there, are really going to struggle to win. I mean, we, we see it every year with certain teams. I see it in Jacksonville right now as for an example. It's just very hard to win if you don't block people. And I'm seeing the Browns in the past the past five years or so we've seen where they've been so good on the, in the trenches on both sides of the ball that that's what won them games and got them to the playoffs. Right now, they're not good on either side outside of Miles Garrett, and it's really hurting them.